Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Morning, Calvary. Pastor Chad here with your word for the day. Uh, Can I just tell you that I love self-honesty and self-awareness? In fact, one of my great uh, sorrows is that it seems to be in short supply a lot of times. And and I grew up in churches where uh, honesty and self-awareness wasn't always practiced, and, and it definitely wasn't practiced like what the Bible teaches. So James has a challenge for us about true religion today in verses 26 and 27 of chapter 1. And before you lose it on the word religion, because like I grew up around the people, I was like, it's not a religion, it's a relationship. I understand that. If you're a follower of Jesus, you get the idea that it's a life-changing relationship with Jesus that you have. You are not practicing a religion. Can I just remind you that everybody who doesn't go to church just looks at us and says, they're really religious. So don't judge people who use the word religious unless they're on the inside, and in which case you can have that conversation. So um, James says this, If anyone thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue but deceives his heart, this person's religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained from the world. Okay, James is incredibly practical, and I love that about him, because he says, look, if you want to really get honest with your life, look at your life and assess your life based on these three things. First of all, you have self-control with words. Does that make anyone else uncomfortable right there? Self-control with words? I mean, if you don't have self-control with words, James says you're deceiving yourself, and your religion might not be all that valuable. Your faith might not be all that valuable. I mean, God wants control of your tongue, and we'll talk more about tongue in coming weeks uh, or coming days here in James as well, but, but God wants control of our tongues, and he wants us to you know, exercise that control, and, and he wants us to praise him and bless people, not praise him and curse people. So um, the first sign of faith and devotion is self-control with words. The second is personal holiness and purity. And, and, and look, if we're not obeying the basic commands of Scripture, we're not living a life that honors Jesus with our bodies, with our minds, with our eyes, then we're living um, a fake faith. Because, you, you know, and I've been around people who say, I love Jesus, but their life doesn't show that in the least. Their, their lives are completely against the teachings of the gospel, but they're like, I love Jesus. And, and I'm like, I don't believe you. Because Jesus said, if you love me, you'll obey me. So uh, true faith and devotion is revealed in self-control with words, personal holiness and purity, and then thirdly, showing compassion to the least of these. The forgotten people of society, widows and orphans in their distress. He says, are you showing compassion to those people who are broken by life, who are forgotten by the world, who nobody cares about but the people of God. By the way, the early church was known for its compassion to the least of these everywhere they went. That's why they spread like wildfire, because people said they treat these people differently than the rest. So I'm just going to encourage you, try using these standards to assess your faith. And if you'll get honest, then I believe that most of us will then repent and get real with God and ask Him to change our lives. So I hope that encourages you to seek God. Have a great day.